I don't know how long I was in the mirror for. Centuries, at least. I saw the doctors on a regular basis. They found me no matter what mirror I was exploring that day. Some of them didn't even seem to remember much about me. But they always demanded I say sorry. They said they'd release me if I did. I always refused, because I wasn't sorry. And then they went away. Until one day a new doctor found me. She hadn't visited me before. She had a swoop of blonde hair and a great seriousness about her despite the fact that she wore a costume with a rainbow across her chest that said she liked to entertain children. On her lapel she wore a badge of a white poppy. So the red-headed doctor was wrong, I said. He wasn't the last. She told me she didn't know about that, but that one rule, perhaps the only solid rule of being the doctor, was that doctors don't know much about themselves. She said she had come here to break another rule. A rule about crossing her own future, about changing decisions her other selves had made and were going to make, because she thought it was a rule that should be broken. She'd been locked in with some friends somewhere, she'd considered her sins, she'd decided there were several sicknesses in her that needed curing. She asked me if I still wanted to get out. Of course, I said, but if you've come here to gloat, you should know I haven't suffered. I've been to every mirror in the universe, and I've frightened many children. I will not bow to you. I will not say sorry, ever. She said she understood that. That in many ways it was her own fault that myself and my family killed so many people. That made me scream at her. What I did wasn't up to you. She told me what I already knew, that if she released me from the mirror, I'd have a life of days or weeks, my normal lifetime, starting again from the point where it had been suspended. I still want to get out, I said, but I will not say sorry. My family did what they needed to do, what they were born to do. If you let me out, I'll keep on killing lesser beings, and then you'll have that on your conscience too. She asked me if I knew what mercy was. I wouldn't reply. She said then that Mercy had nothing to do with fairness. That Mercy set fairness aside and said there was no getting even, no balancing the scales. There was only deciding against pain. There was only being kind to yourself by being kind to others. She said she didn't need me to be sorry. And she took a big hammer from her pocket. I jumped back from the mirror as she smashed it. She smashed it time after time, smashed it into a million pieces. And then she held her hand out to me. The expression on her face was stern, not welcoming. She said something about this being an end to bad luck. I didn't take her hand. But I did step out of the mirror. She said there was nothing on this world. That's why she'd come to free me here. She took me to her TARDIS. She stayed looking determined as she operated the controls. She watched me in case I touched anything. I was shaking inside, trying to deal with my freedom, hoping against hope this wasn't some further twist on her revenge. But when the doors opened, there was my home. There were the spires and the great spiral troughs. There were my people, linking in the great chains, sunning themselves on the rocks in their natural form. She told me to get out. She told me I wouldn't have time to leave this place before the end of my natural life. That I would be free to live and die as I should have in the first place. That she had made this decision for me and for herself and for all her other selves. I stepped out of the doors. I was really there, really home. I didn't understand why she'd done that. I still don't. I was furious at her for having this kind of power over me as my people are always angry because of the historical injustice perpetuated against us. I was about to turn and release my balloon to eat her face. But by the time I did so, her TARDIS had already faded away. I could only turn back to look at my world. I couldn't help but feel something relax inside me at being in the embrace of my people. They were already coming towards me, calling out, curious, welcoming. 
I took a deep breath and the air was good 